Ah, salam and good evening to you, worthy friend. Please, please come closer. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 voice actors who replaced the original. Aren't you forgetting something? Nah, I was just seeing if you were paying attention. Shazam! Shazam! For this list, we'll be looking at the behind-the-mic talent that took over as the voices of our favorite characters. Which voices do you prefer? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10. Mila Kunis replaced Lacey Chabert as Meg Griffin, Family Guy. The sardonic teen of the Griffin family rose to prominence thanks to Kunis's excellent dry delivery. But she wasn't the first actor to take a crack at the role. For the show's first season, Lacey Chabert lent her voice to Meg. Forget it, what good is a car if I have no friends? I didn't wreck TV, my dad did! When the actress had scheduling conflicts with school and other projects, she was recast. Kunis has remained in the part ever since. The show still winks at its oft-forgotten past with Chabert in the role. All right, I'm off to train for the Olympics. See? I've been training since I was Lacey Chabert! She may not have originated the part, but we can't imagine saying Shut up, Meg! to anyone other than Kunis. Shut up, Meg! No, you shut up, Meg! No, you shut up, Meg! Shut up, Meg! Number 9. Katie Griffin replaced Katie Lee as Alex, Totally Spies. Recasts are never easy, especially when a show hinges upon the cast's chemistry like this children's spy series did. <sighs> Fine, I'll do it. Just watch my back. And my front. And, and all the rest of me. When production moved from LA to Toronto for the show's third season, Lee was unable to continue her role as the hyperactive agent Alex. That's when Katie Griffin joined the team. Oh, I wouldn't mind if a few geeks were interested in me. While slotting into an established ensemble is no small task, Griffin added enough earnestness and energy to her performance to make the transition feel seamless. It's a testament to Griffin's portrayal that the chemistry between the lead characters was still strong after this major change. Hey, what do you say we work together on this? Great idea! Uh, uh, mm. Number 8. Chad Lowe replaced Rob Lowe as Billy Batson, Shazam, Captain Marvel, Young Justice. Rob Lowe's infectious energy and pitch-perfect comedic timing made him literally expertly cast as the preteen boy who can transform into a buff superhero. I'll be back for a visit. I promise. I think I'll call him Mr. Tawny. But when scheduling conflicts prevented him from returning to the role, this superhero show didn't go too far to find a new vocal talent. Rob's younger brother Chad captured the same lovable energy that the character had in his first appearances. Captain, where have you been? On a world without grown-ups. Holy moly, there are two worlds! He quickly proved why he should continue to take the reign as Captain Marvel, or Shazam. It's safe to say that both Lowe's have acting superpowers. <laughs> sorry, sorry. The, the guy just cracks me up. Number 7. Candy Milo replaced Christine Cavanaugh as Dexter, Dexter's Laboratory. The bespectacled protagonist of this legendary animated series is known for his distinct nasally voice. So it's surprising that the person behind Dexter actually changed halfway through the series. You can say that again. Cavanaugh, who originated the role, retired from voice acting early into production of the show's third season. Milo was then brought in to symbolically put on the glasses of the genius. <laughs> oh, this is even better than that old one! Let's get to work! Despite Kavanaugh's extremely recognizable voice, Milo did an admirable job replicating Dexter's aloof attitude and nasally vocals. Milo would stay with the show until its conclusion. Even Dexter's biggest fans may not have noticed the scientist was ever recast. By sending your voice through the pipes of the organ, where it is modified in pitch and tone, and that is sent back to your vocal cords and the presto! Number 6. Henry Corden replaced Alan Reed as Fred Flintstone, Various. Our favorite prehistoric patriarch of the Flintstone family was played to perfection by Reed. It was great to hear his voice while watching Fred's dim-witted yet well-meaning hijinks. Out of my way, anything you can do, I can do better. Well, look, it ain't easy. Explain it to me once, I will show you I'm ready to solo. During his tenure, there was one Mr. Flintstone scene that needed another voice. 
When Fred was scripted to do a musical number in the special The Man Called Flintstone, Reed revealed he couldn't sing. Corden was brought in to provide the vocals for Fred's song. Yeah, that's the long and short of it. The unabridged report of it. The starboard and the port of it. Teammates. And after Reed sadly passed in 1977, Corden took over the role full time. He imbued the character with the good spirited attitude we'd come to know and love while becoming an important part of prehistoric cartoon history. As one of my valued employees, I appreciate what you're doing, Flintstone. And as one of your valued vice presidents, you'll appreciate it even more. Number 5. Dan Castellaneta replaced Robin Williams as Genie. Various. It's impossible to imagine anyone besides Williams playing Aladdin's blue and wish-granting friend. The comedy legend delivered an iconic, unforgettable performance that elevated the material to make the genie one of the most recognizable characters in Disney's catalog. The ever-impressive. The long-contained duck. But never duplicated, 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 genie of the lamp. But disputes over the marketing of the first film led to a fallout between Williams and the studio. This conflict led to Castellaneta being brought in for the direct-to-video sequel and television series. He's big. He's blue. He's black. While living up to Williams' defining performance was a daunting task, Castellaneta proved more than capable of stepping up to the plate. He offered a take that felt fresh and exciting while being respectful to what came before. Castellaneta was simply magical in the role. For my next trick, baby boo! Number 4. Greg Baldwin replaced Mako Iwamatsu as Iroh and Aku, Avatar The Last Airbender and Samurai Jack. Uncle Iroh is one of Avatar The Last Airbender's most beloved characters. A major reason why he charmed us was because of Mako's effortlessly genuine performance as the wise mentor. So, Top thinks you give pretty good advice. And great tea. The key to both is proper aging. What's on your mind? When he passed away after production wrapped on season two, the show paid tribute to him with an on-screen memorial. Baldwin finished Iroh's journey in the third season with an emotional and layered performance that honored the actor who came before. You struggled, you suffered, but you have always followed your own path. You restored your own honor, and only you can restore the honor of the Fire Nation. This wouldn't be the last time Baldwin took over a role originated by Mako. Aku was originally voiced by Mako in Samurai Jack. When the show returned after a long hiatus, Baldwin stepped into the role of the big bad. It has been too long. Far, far too long. Number 3. Jim Cummings replaced Sterling Holloway as Winnie the Pooh, Farious. Despite his longevity, this honey-loving bear hasn't gone through many voice actors. Holloway was the first to voice the role in the 1966 featurette Winnie the Pooh and the Honey Tree. Up. Down, up, when I up, down, touch the ground, it puts me in the mood. Up, down, touch the ground, in the mood, for food. He kept playing the bear for over a decade until his retirement. When the 1988 series The New Adventures of Winnie the Pooh rolled around, Cummings took up the mantle. Lucky I dropped in to find it for you, Rabbit. Now, if you please, just a small smackerel. He's held down the role ever since. Both actors invoke the lovable bear with the sweet sincerity and gentleness that defines the character. Cummings remained in the role long after Sterling Holloway passed away. Whether it's an animated film, cartoon series, or the live-action Christopher Robin, Cummings made sure Pooh's voice sounded comforting and familiar. Oh, who is that? Pooh. She can't be Pooh. I'm Pooh. Now that's Evelyn. Number 2. Mel Blanc replaced Joe Doherty as Porky Pig. Various. Many Looney Tunes fans remember that Porky Pig tended to stutter while speaking. 
He shared this trait with the original voice actor Joe Doherty. While this vocal pattern became an iconic part of the character, it also caused production costs to spike. Doherty's recording sessions were lengthy and often filled with retakes of certain lines. Since the studio found his sessions too expensive, Blank was brought in to replace Doherty. you don't have to fly off the handle like that. This is going to be a tough job. It was unfortunate that the actor wasn't able to continue the role he helped make so famous. Thankfully, Blank honored the original actor by making sure Porky continued to stutter. That's all, folks. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Wayne Allwine replaced Walt Disney as Mickey Mouse. Various. If anyone was destined to step into these mouse-shaped shoes, it was Allwine. He had the responsibility of taking over the role from Walt Disney himself. I can't believe it. Is it bad? What? It says here that you can change yourself into anything. Disney had begun to phase out of the role in the later years of his life. However, it was only after his passing in 1966 that Allwine fully took up the mantle as the mascot's official voice. Wow, oh, this is it, guys. This is what we've been waiting for all our lives. Now, when these doors open, we've got to make a great first impression. He's responsible for some of Mickey's classic moments. And if that weren't enough, he married Rusie Taylor, the voice for Minnie Mouse at the time. If that doesn't prove that Allwine was the perfect fit for this iconic mouse, we don't know what does. Aw, thanks for stopping by! Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.